Hi and welcome to Knit All The Things. My name is Laurel. I'm also known as West Maven on Instagram Ravelry. And here, if you're new, this is a space where I talk about all the things I'm knitting, all the things I want to knit, all things yarn, just all the things. And if you are returning, welcome back Knitting Bestie. I can't wait to catch up with you. On today's episode, I have so much to catch you up on. We are going to talk about the test knitting process. I just finished up a test knit for Caitlin Hunter and I wanna kind of go through that with you. I also have two new cast-ons, a finished knitted bag that I can't wait to show you, and we're gonna go through the latest issue of Pom Pom Magazine. So grab your knitting, get cozy, and let's jump right in, shall we? Today I'm coming to you from Portland, Oregon, and it is rainy and not very warm. It's only 63 degrees out, and because of that, I got to wear this sweater one more time, and so I'm taking advantage of that. This is my Monday sweater by Petite Knit. I knit it in Volenvine yarns in her colorway Krampus, in her Nouveau base, and her Ghostly space. I just love it. It is so cozy. It's kind of like, to me, a fancy sweatshirt and I just really enjoy wearing it. I really love the color and it turned out so beautifully and I just had to wear it one more time while it, before the hot weather is here and it has to just go away. So that's what I'm wearing today. I did a whole episode on it. I will link that below. Anything I talk about today will be linked below but that way you know where to find it. Okay, so let's talk test knitting. I just finished this beautiful shirt behind me for a new design by Caitlin Hunter. It's going to be called the Alpine Bloom Tea, and I will link everything below. Once the pattern comes out, I will also update those links so that if you're watching this in the next few weeks, they will all be down there. So the Alpine Bloom Tea is a color work tea that I knit in linen. I did 100% organic linen, linen. It was a yarn by Isair and it is their Hoor Organic. I really enjoyed working with this yarn. I used the colors ink and cowl and it just turned out beautifully. This beautiful tee has lace details on the cuffs and the neckline and I just think you're going to enjoy knitting it so much. But since it's not out yet, let's talk about the process more. So the process of a test knit, if you are unfamiliar or you just haven't test knit before, you basically have to apply to test knit. A designer will put out a call once they finish a design and you can apply. I have a couple of tricks and tips for you if you would like, but essentially you apply and say, I wanna knit this. If you're chosen, they will send you the pattern prior to it being released. Most often it is tech edited, but it isn't always. And so you will knit the design, make sure that you're writing down like your yardage and all of that so that once the pa pattern is published, other people that want to knit the design can easily look it up and see how much yarn was used. The designer gets nice feedback on how it was to knit the item and the whole overall um, design or the whole pattern. So one of the really amazing things I found for this particular test knit, because I had not test knit for Caitlin before, was just the group of knitters that come together to test knit. There's a Ravelry group, and it is a very pleasurable experience. If you are interested in test knitting one of her designs in particular, I recommend following her on Instagram and joining her Ravelry group, because that's kind of where all of the testing happens. And that goes for any designer. If you're interested in test knitting for someone or you really admire their designs, follow them on social media. If they have a newsletter, sign up for it. And if they have a Ravelry group, join it because those are the ways in which they typically will communicate any test knits. This also is probably going to be the case, especially if they're going to be in a publication or anything like that, where they're going to need to keep it kind of secret. So those are my recommendations. If you're wanting to test knit for someone, then make sure that you kind of follow them everywhere. Stock your favorite designers, kind of, sort of, maybe don't actually stock them, but you know what I mean. So that's what I would recommend. Um, and then just be a great note taker. If you have a Ravelry account, make sure that you really have some well thought out um, information within your Ravelry so that if they do want to look through that, they can see that, oh, you take notes and you have some feedback, etc. 
Um, so those are some of the recommendations for test knitting. But I want to say that I just really enjoyed this test knit. I enjoyed knitting the sweater. I enjoyed being in that group of knitters and seeing everybody's progress. It is a lot like a knit along, which is really fun. Um, and so, yeah, that's it. We'll talk about this more once the pattern comes out, but I had so much fun knitting it. Again, the pattern will be called the Alpine Bloom. Keep an eye out. It's really, really fun to knit. I highly recommend it. A lot of people used spin cycle yarns for their, um, the color work portion and they turned out beautifully. Caitlin used um, spin cycle for her color work. I think there's a lot of ways you can do this. I went more of a bold color palette. Some people did muted color work. There's a million different variations and it'll be really exciting to see once it comes out, you can look on Ravelry and look at everybody's projects that have knitted already and really get some great inspiration for that. And also follow the hashtag. If you have any questions about test knitting or something I didn't quite cover because I obviously didn't go through it in depth, make sure to leave those comments below and I will do my best to answer them or if it seems like there's enough of them, I can make a video. So my next project that I wanted to tell you about was the dumpling bag. This is a free pattern on Pearl Soho. It was designed by Jeannie Lee and it's kind of cute. It has a long strap and a shorter strap. You put the long strap through the shorter strap and you can hold it like this. Let me put something in it really quickly. We'll use Mr. Frog. Okay, so there you go. So it's this cute little bag. I was thinking that I would use it as a pr knitting project bag, like a sock bag, but I'm kind of changing my mind on that. So when I was knitting it, I did not experience this, but after I blocked it, I've had this weird, I'm trying to show you, there's like a fuzz that will kind of get stuck to my hand from it. I'm a little bit concerned that if I put a project in this bag, it might end up getting black fuzz on it or get have some interaction with the yarn. When I was blocking this particular project bag, it ended up exhausting a lot of dye, which is fine and maybe something to keep in mind if you're going to like do a striped one with a dark and a light color. But basically I was a little bit concerned that one, it might get something on a lighter colored yarn. I could possibly like quote unquote refix the dye and Pearl Soho even has like a way to do that on their website. Um, but I don't know, I'm not sure. If you have experience with this, let me know because I'm a little bit, I was like very excited to get it done, super excited to block it, loved how it turned out, but then I was like a little wah wah, sad, sad trumpet, sad trom trombone, because I was afraid that it will, I don't want it to ruin any for future projects or yarn, so I'm not really sure how I will use this, but it's cute, it turned out cute, I like that, I knitted something that was not a garment and I'm really happy. Like, I think mine turned out beautifully. It does use one entire skein of their Blackbird Linen. I used the color Raven and this is a 100% worsted weight French linen yarn. But it's really pretty. I think I would knit another one. I really liked this pattern. I'm just a little bit concerned about the this particular yarn. I do even think that if I used a lighter yarn or just they're like natural, then it may not have this same issue. It might just be something that like the yarn is getting kind of broken in and it will stop being, having that weird fuzz. I don't really know. But again, if you know, or you have any thoughts on it, please let me know. But this is the dumpling bag. This is a current knit along that's still going on. It ends on July 9th, I believe. They have all the information on their website. They have a special tab that says join our Cal. So you can click on that and it'll give you all the information and it has links to like the yarn, etc. So you can get all that information um, on there. But I enjoyed knitting this. It was very quick and easy. It was a great mindless knit. I 
feel like knitting this, I actually kind of honed my knitting and the dark skills. My kids are having a hard time with sleep lately. And so I will be in their room during bedtime and I was able to actually not look and knit on this, which to me felt like I was unlocking a secret superhuman power because I'm not the best at that. I still like to look at my knitting even though I probably don't have to. It's just a thing. So I just thought, you know what? It's black yarn, I can't see, it's in the dark. We'll see how it goes and it turned out fine. It didn't drop any stitches or anything. But that's my Dumpling Bag by Jeannie Lee, a free pattern on Pearl Soho. Everything will be linked below. I hope you make one. It was a fun pattern. I think it would be a cute gift. So yeah, get start your start your gift knit, gift knitting now. But yeah, that was my other finished object for this week. So I have a couple of updates. My first work in progress, which you saw, was the Ranunculus sweater by Midori Hirose. I am knitting it. Uh, using Illimani Sabri and that is an 85% cotton, 15% baby alpaca. I really love this a lot and I'll kind of talk about it a little bit but I knit this tee in black, I knit the bag in black, I'm knitting this sweater in black and there's a new pattern that I cast on and part of me almost grabbed more black yarn and I thought I need something else like I can't just make like I cannot make another black sweater right this second I will make more but for right now I was like I, I need something else so we'll talk about that in a minute but I'm enjoying making this I tried my hardest to get it done but as I will show you in a little bit I have other projects going and I couldn't get it done I really wanted to wear this today. That was like in my head what I was going to be wearing, but nope, maybe next time. I don't know. I still think that I'm going to um, make flutter sleeves. So I currently just bound off for the short sleeve, which I can leave it and wear it like that. But what I actually think I'm going to do is I'm going to knit front back in all of these stitches and create a flutter sleeve and knit for a few rows and then bind off again and kind of see how that goes. But that in my head is how I kind of want it to be. I could change my mind once I put it on when it's done and think that's fine too, I don't know. But I do think this will be a very wearable garment in the summer because it is such a big gauge and it is just a very light fabric and with the cotton, even though it has a little bit of alpaca in it, I don't think it's gonna make it warmer. But yeah. I really love how this turned out. I, part of me almost wanted to add like beads or something and maybe I would make another one again and do something like that. But this time I thought I'll just keep it plain and easy so it can be a casual knit to wear throughout the summer. So I'm very excited to get this done. The weather is about to warm up and I really do want to wear it. So I'm hoping that I can get this done soon and be wearing it by the next time. This is my third one, and I really can't say enough about the pattern. I really love it. It's a good, like, engaging enough in the yoke, and I just think they fit in a fun way. I like to wear oversized things, and just the fit of this is something I, I like a lot. I really enjoy a lot of positive ease for this particular sweater, I think. I'm knitting a size five, and I want to say how I chose that size was by looking at some of her modeled pictures. And I think on the picture it said like 45 centimeters of positive ease. So I want to say that is how I chose the size. It will be oversized, but that's how I want it to be. So. I'm really excited to get this done. This one is just a fingering yarn. The other ones I have made have been a fingering and mohair together. So this will definitely be more lightweight compared to the other ones and kind of a meshy fabric. So hopefully I can get this done quickly and wear it soon. The other project that I have that I talked about last time were socks for my husband. It's going to be Father's Day tomorrow. They're not gonna be done by then. 
and then his birthday is on Tuesday, which if I abandon everything else, I could potentially get, get a pair of socks done by Tuesday, but I will have to do nothing else. And I don't know that that will happen. He might get a sock and he can have the other one later. I don't know, but I am using, um, Ching Fibers colorway narwhal in their twist base, twist merino base, I think. It's really pretty. I love like, so this particular skein, when I went to pick it out at Ritual Dyes, had a lot of green in it. I did notice like on their website and other pictures of this color narwhal um, having less. So this one has a lot of green in the scheme. I think if you were like super obsessed with this, like I am, they might have one skein like this left. But anyway, I really like the color. It's got like a lavender with speckles in it and it knits up so fun. So this is how it's knitting up so far. And I just like how it's a little bit stripey and really, I love, I love how this is turning out. So I am just knitting a vanilla sock. I actually had knit like half of this in a three by one rib, which I've knit him before. And then I changed my mind. So I just ripped back to the cuff, which I could have just ripped up the whole thing. It's not like that takes that long, but I ripped back to the cuff and then just have done a vanilla sock. I'm going to do a heel flap and gusset and go from there. I kind, I am essentially following the I'm so basic pattern by Summer Lee. I find that it fits really nicely. It's very simple. Even when I am doing like the three by one, sock pattern. I like to follow her, the numbers that she has there just because that's an easy way for me to find them, an easy place for them to be. So that's what I have currently and I'm really enjoying it. I'm using nine inch circulars for the first time for a sock. I have used it in the past for the color work socks and I've used it like once I get the heel done, then I will switch to these for whatever reason. But this is my first time just starting with them. And I don't know, like I normally knit magic loop and sometimes I don't know if that's easier or harder on my hands than these. I haven't actually quite figured that out because I haven't been doing a great job consistently knitting on these. I've been getting distracted by other projects. I really wanted this one to be all the way done. And then I was switched over to my ranunculus and wanted that done. So now like this will be my main focus for the next few days. And I don't know how it's going to be with the, I might switch back to a magic loop, but for now I'm using nine inch circular needles by um, Chao Gu and they're good. I've used them. I've been using nine inch circulars more lately. I've used it on like a sleeve and a few other things. So I think I've just been using them more and which is why I kind of grabbed them in the first place. But yeah, I don't know. If you knit on nine inch circulars and love it, let me know. If you have tried it and hate it, let me know. I'm kind of curious what other people do. Again, I normally do magic loop. I just, for whatever reason was like, oh, I'll grab these and start. So let me know what your preference is and what you found for using it with hand fatigue because I feel like I've been knitting a lot. Hohi Locatelli recently put out like one in her one of her newsletters like a knitter's tip and it was one from her mom which was like have a bunch of different projects which I normally do um, and I do find that I don't really get hand fatigue if I'm knitting on a lot of things. I start to when I'm knitting on only one thing exclusively. So I'm just kind of curious how other people feel about that or like how that works for you. So let me know. But that is kind of been, this will probably be more of a primary project for now, but here's the thing. I got distracted and I, I couldn't help myself. So, in 
about a month ago, I want to say, maybe a little bit more, Jesse May, Jesse May Designs, put out a testing call. She has an email list. I want to say she has an email newsletter that you can sign up for if you're interested in tests. And I had signed up for it in the past and she had put out a testing call for three top summer tops. And this top was in one of them. And the second I saw it, I thought, oh my God, I really want to test knit that, but ended up not doing it or not getting chosen and which is okay. But I was like, I cannot wait for this pattern to come out because I am very interested in knitting it. So it is the mini mock neck tank by Jessie May. And I, I could not wait to knit this. So I started, I'm using S Sweet Skein of Mine's MCN base. And we'll talk about that in a second, but I've just started, this is just like a back part of the back, but the yarn itself, get really close so you can see, is so pretty because it is mostly a white base, but you can almost see some like light pink variegation and then speckles. Okay. So this yarn by Sweet Skein of Mine is Merino Cashmere Nylon. It's an 80-10-10. It has 355 yards for 115 grams. So in my mind, it's almost a sport weight yarn-ish. I mean, it's fingering weight, but it also is kind of seems a little sport sporty. It's a fluffier fingering weight, if you will. But I don't know what she does with her yarn. It is so soft. I have knit with a bunch of other 801010 yarns and they're not this soft. I don't know. Like you can even see, let's see if you can see this. There's like a halo on this yarn, like a strong, there you can see it right there strong halo on this yarn knit up there's like a nice halo it is fluffy and soft and springy and squishy and really amazing so i looked on her website because i was going to talk about this and wanted to see if she had this color available it's the huga h-y-g-g-e colorway she does not have this particular one, but she had one very close to it. Um, and so I can put that somewhere, but she did have a very close color way where it was this kind of natural color with speckles. And I thought it was really, really nice as well. So you could, if you were like, I love that color. She doesn't necessarily have this one, but she has something similar. I, I don't know Amanda well. <laughs> but I would imagine you could always email her and see if she was going to dye this anytime soon. Um, she also has a YouTube channel where she, she does like more of a vlog style video, but they're really fun to watch. So I recommend doing that. But sweet skein of mine. I really, really love this yarn. I had three skeins. I plan on making this tank longer. So I thought I would need at least two. The third one, I thought I could make a cute hat or something. Like I am obsessed with this yarn. It is incredibly soft. So sweet, sweet skein of mine. And I really, 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 really could not be happier knitting this. It is so fun. And the colors are just so cute knit up. I was like not sure about, I'm gonna try and find it in the yarn, how there's like these like light pink kind of lines, how that was going to turn out. And if you look at this knitted up, you can kind of see like the little bit, little bit of it, but it's such a like pretty, pretty yarn. I just really am enjoying. After knitting so much linen, I think I was craving something super soft and squishy and like, texturally feeling good because I actually don't mind knitting with linen, but I do think that having that break is important because I was really like, I just want something soft. With that being said, I have been talking about 
knitting something for my friend who's having a baby and I received the yarn and it's a cotton cashmere and it's by Katia, it's their concept yarn. And I think this is going to be really, really nice to work with as well. So it's just, I think right now, like I'm strong yarn tapped out for the moment, which is a little bit unfortunate because I have a bunch of linen tanks and tops that I want in it. And maybe this will be enough of a palette cleanser where I can get back to it. But I definitely was like, Okay, I need, I need a break. But I am so excited to see this mock tank done. I have seen so many pictures on Instagram and Ravelry of people who've made them on all kinds of bodies. And I think it's such a flattering top. It's a high neck and then it has such a nice like shoulder line. I just think it's gonna be so pretty when it's done. I can't, I really am excited. But I almost made this in black <laughs> because I was just like on a kick. I'm trying to knit things that I will wear all the time and I wear a lot of black. So that is partially why I keep grabbing and gravitating towards that color, but I am trying to push myself and do different things. This is a good neutral as well. And I think it will be really nice. So that is kind of my plan with that right now. So I just had the cutest interruption for my kids. So I'm not exactly sure it was, but we were talking about how I was creating soft yarns after doing all the linen. So I'm just very excited to kind of continue on that path. I do want to get back to my linen knitting because I do have a lot of things I want to knit that I have linen yarn for and I'm not against it. I just think I needed a little break. Okay, so I cannot wait to share with you and talk with you about Pom Pom's latest issue, issue 45. There's some really great patterns in here. I do want to say like, gosh, those crochet patterns are turning my head a little bit. I really, really thought this Luminata, the, the front page, uh, was very pretty. And the bag on the back, like how cute. But what I think, there's two like top, top patterns for me in this particular issue. And then an, an other thing. So let's start with the other thing. They have the cutest, I'm gonna try to do this in like, and now I'm showing it off way. But they have this cutest sewn bag, which, are you kidding me? It would be so cute for notions and there's like full instructions on how to make it happen for yourself. It's so cute. I really kind of wanna like play around with that, which is like so, it's not knitting and I'm not really a sewist. Like I don't think I have sewn things in the past. It's not my like top thing that I enjoy, but I thought that was a really fun, like it could be, it could be knitting adjacent. You could use it for knitting. I think to me, the most wearable of all of them is this dress. And it has this very interesting stitch. It's called the Melba dress. And I think it's super cute. However, I think instead of making it a dress, I think I would probably make it a top because I just, one, don't really wear dresses. But two, I think it would be a very cute, like summery tank top, which you obviously would have to wear something under, but I think it's really cute. They have it in two versions and I think it's just a fun pattern, but Again, I don't think that I would wear it by, obviously I wouldn't wear it by itself. I'd have to have something underneath of it. Okay, so there's two other patterns that I think are absolutely fantastic. There is the Pina Colada sweater, which is an intarsia sweater. So I don't know that it's necessarily the most approachable pattern, but I do think it's very cool. You get this effect by using two yarns and then in the like crisscross area, you're knitting, you're draw, sorry. In the crisscross area, you're marling two yarns. And in the in-between spaces, you're dropping one of those yarns and knitting, but you are using intarsia. And it just looks very cool. I could see it being just like a fun layering sweater, but it certainly is going to be some effort, if you will. But it is just so, so cute. I really love that texture. And I think it's a really fun knit that they chose. 
The other one that I really was drawn to in this particular issue was the Palm Tank Top. I think with summer, this is really cute. I think the only thing that I would consider doing slightly differently was making maybe a slightly thicker um, arm strap, arm band. But other than that, I think it's a very cute pattern. Again, it seems like all of the summery ones, you kind of have to make sure you have a nice thing to wear underneath of it, but I thought it was so cute. I love the, the eyelets. Such a pretty, pretty top with the little ruffle in the eyelids. I think it's just darling. But those are the ones that really caught my eye and this issue of Pom Pom. I will say, like, they are killing it with their crochet patterns. And to be honest, I, like, I am so drawn to the crochet ones in this one. I don't <laughs> think at this moment I'm going to crochet them, but I'm going to keep it on my shelf because I really think some of these are just so cute. Like that to me is very wearable for the summer and I just really, really like it a lot. The other thing that I kind of wanted to say about this is we have a hat in here that's crochet. Again, crochet it is so cute, like so cute. So check out this issue of Pom Pom. I think it has a lot of really fun, fun patterns. I do think I read that they are coming out with a crochet book, which makes sense. They're finding all these amazing patterns and I really, I really think it'll be a fun book. So I don't know, maybe I will start crocheting more. I just am not a garment crocheter. I don't feel like I have enough knowledge of crochet. Like I understand the stitches and whatnot, but I don't think that the garment construction I quite fully understand. I'm sure I could figure it out, but I'm a lot less confident in spending the time to make a, a crochet item. I could see myself partic maybe making a bag, but right now that's probably all my <laughs> skill level will allow me to do for the moment. And again, like many issues, they have a really yummy looking recipe. This time it is like, a, I think it's a rhubarb tart, but look how good that looks. Looks so good. But that is the issue 45 of Pom Pom Magazine. I think it's so fun. If nothing else, even if you were not to necessarily knit something out of it, I a lot of times will get a lot of inspiration in color choices and all kinds of things. So I highly recommend this one. I think right now I'm like dreaming up different combinations for that intarsia sweater. I can do intarsia and I actually enjoy it quite a bit, but for some reason in my head right now, it feels like a hard thing to do. I think I'm really, really attracted to simple patterns at the moment, but that's not to say I won't feel like a challenge later on. So I am really like pondering that, that intarsia pina colada sweater. I think it's so fun. I really, 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 really love it. I'm trying to find it one more time. There it is. But look how pretty it is. And I just like that you use two yarns and then you're dropping one for that center piece. But yeah, I could imagine it in like a really pretty, you could do it moody, you could do it like very bright, like you could do like a bright pink and purple combo that might be fun. You could do it moody, like a, a red and black. Me and my black yarn, I tell you. I'm gonna go blind trying to knit black yarn. Okay, so that is the issue 45 of Pom Pom Magazine. Um, if you've made it this far in the podcast, the rest is life stuff. So if you don't wanna stick around for that, that's okay. I've enjoyed hanging out with you. If you wanna catch up, that's what we're gonna do. I will say that if you've made it this far, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and why don't you tell me what you've been knitting on? I would love to hear about it. So as far as life stuff goes, I have been 
very busy. In between the last podcast and this podcast, I had my oldest son's birthday and that was super fun. He wanted balloons. I actually thought I was going to get out of the balloons this time because he had said, you know how some people, like some people like balloons and some people don't. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, I'm somebody that likes balloons. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll make that happen for you. So we did all green, two shades of green, and I will pop in a picture here. Um, it was really fun. And I can't believe that I have a kid that's about to go to school. That's crazy to me. Um, but yeah, so that was fun. Okay, so recommendations, etc. I've been watching, well, I watched all of it. I haven't been watching. I I finished it. Kunk on Earth. It's like a mockumentary. So think like drunk history or I guess not quite like drunk history because it's not like that outlandish, but it's hilarious. It is such a funny, like, I don't know how the actress that does like Kunk does what she does. Like she is so hilarious and she is so straight faced. Like it is, she's so good. So I recommend watching that. You'll laugh out loud, it's on Netflix, and I will pop the link for that below. The other thing that I have been doing is kind of catching up on my My Favorite Murder podcast. I took a little break once I had kids, because a lot of times I would just listen to it on in the room, and it's not really kid appropriate, but every so often I'll be like folding laundry or knitting or doing whatever and listening to it in my AirPods so I don't feel as guilty listening to horrible things. <laughs> around my kids. But that's been kind of fun because I've kind of missed that. So the other thing that I listened to in the last couple of weeks was called The Yellow Wallpaper. It was written by Charlotte Perkins Gilman and it was published in 1892. And it is it details the deterioration of a woman's mental health while she's on a rest cure in a rented summer country estate with her family. And she starts to become obsessed with this wallpaper. And it's all of her like letters as she's there for this time. And in my head, I had heard about this and thought, okay, this is, this sounds interesting. I thought it was a lot longer. It's like a 20, it's like a 30 minute audiobook. It's very short, um, but it was really interesting and just a different thing to listen to. So if that interests you, there's that. Other than that, that's kind of all I've been up to lately. In the next couple of weeks, I have my husband's birthday coming up and Father's Day is tomorrow. Um, for those of you who celebrate, happy Father's Day. I have a mixed emotion with this holiday, so I'm very happy to celebrate my husband, but um, I have mixed emotions. So I understand that as well. I'm getting my hair done so you guys will get to see new hair or exactly the same hair, who knows, but maybe a little less gray. So that's gonna happen. And yeah, so that's all I have going on for the next couple of weeks. I look forward to hopefully having something finished, whether it be hopefully the socks, maybe my ranunculus sweater, maybe the tank. That would be a lot of knitting. Maybe it can happen. What do you think? Can I do it? Thank you for spending your time with me at Knitting Bestie. If we're not besties yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I make these videos every two weeks. Until next time, happy knitting. I hope you are enjoying what you're making and we'll talk again soon. Bye.